call the meeting of the City Council for Monday, January 13th, 2020. Please stand and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, counselors. Welcome to our new counselors. We have, um, this is your first official meeting. Uh, welcome, Ward 5 uh, City Councilor Jeff Thompson and our two new at-large counselors, uh, Tina Cardoso and Rita Mendez. Welcome. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you. Our returning uh, counselor, counselor at-large, Moses Rodriguez, returning from the mayor's office. So, welcome everybody, happy new year. And uh, today, before we start our meeting, we actually have a guest in the chambers, our mayor, Robert Sullivan. Congratulations and welcome. And um, I know that the, the mayor had a few uh, things that he'd like to maybe mention at the beginning of the year. Could have him at the beginning of the meeting. Thank you very much, welcome. Madam President. And I want to congratulate the three new counselors. Uh, job well done and I look forward to working with all of you. This is a really good group of Brocktonians. Uh, in the spirit of my inaugural speech addressed the other day in terms of working together, I just wanted to let each and every one of you that this coming Thursday, which is uh, at 10 a.m. at Brockton High School, <coughs> Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito will be there at Brockton High. If you have the opportunity to go up there, you can meet in the principal, Dr. Cliff Murray's office. Um, we're going to be talking about the Innovations uh, Gateway uh, Path, Path Gateway Grant at 10 o'clock this Thursday. I also just wanted to again uh, reintroduce you to uh, Kerry Richards, my Chief of Staff, uh, who is always ready, willing, and able to, uh, to help any of you. And then also I just wanted to uh, make it known that effective today, Attorney um, um, Sean Murphy is the interim uh, City Solicitor for the City of Brockton. And um, with that being said, I, again, I thank you. I look forward to working with you and have a great 2020. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Clerk, can we um, have agenda item number one? We have the acceptance of the minutes of the December 23rd, 2019 <coughs> City Council <sighs> meeting. Accepted and placed on file. Acceptance of the minutes of the January 6, 2020 City Council inauguration. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the Director of Planning and Economic Development requested that the City Council authorize the acceptance and expenditures of the grant award and the amount of 229000 from the Department of Housing and Community Development Commonwealth Housing Choice Program grant to City of Brockton Planning and Economic Development Housing Choice Program grant fund. The grant funds will be used to fund the Keith Park pedestrian crossing improvements as part of a larger push to modernize and revitalize the Campello neighborhood. This project will address the need for pedestrians infrastructure that makes Brockton safer and more comfortable for the elderly and people with disabilities. No match is required. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the mayor in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 59, Section 25, requesting that the Board of Assessors determine the amount of excess overlay. Accepted and placed on we file. Have a communication from the mayor in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, recommending that the City Council authorize the total transfer of $4,750,000 from overlay surplus to law department court judgments. Accepted and placed on communication file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on have file. A communication from the mayor Accepted. in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, recommending that the City Council authorize a total transfer of $300,000 from overlay surplus to human resources, full time salaries, $150,000, and to human resources purchases of services, $150,000. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the mayor <coughs> in accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 44 recommending that the City Council authorize a total transfer of $99,312.07 from the Police Department, 
full-time salaries to mayor's office personal services, non-overtime, $74,498.60, and to the law department personal services, non-overtime, $24,813.44, and in order to pay separation costs for former employees. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor's Office Grant Coordinator recommending that the City Council authorize the acceptance and expenditures in the grant award and the amount of $600,000 from the Department of Justice Office of Justice Programs Comprehensive Opiate Abuse Site-Based Program grant funds to Brockton Mayor's Office Comprehensive Opiate Abuse Site-Based Program grant funds. The grant funds will develop a collaborative champion plan preventative model to provide additional resources for individuals suffering from substance abuse uh, disorders, HIV, AIDS, STI, HCV, educational services to the most vulnerable groups identified in the community. No match is required. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the fire chief requesting that the city council authorize the acceptance and expenditures of the grant award in the amount of $250,000 from the Commonwealth of Mass Executive Office of Public Safety and Security to Brockton Fire Department. The grant is a SY 2020 Massachusetts Public Safety Staffing Grant to be used for overtime necessary to maintain staffing levels. No match is required. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor in accordance with the general laws of Massachusetts, Chapter 44, recommend that the City Council authorize the total appropriation of $5,457,233 using <clears throat> the form of order with language as recommended by Attorney Richard Bandley of Locke and Lord LLP, the City's Bond Council, in order to provide funding through borrowing set amounts is to pay the following cost. Cemetery Department Capital, $650,000. Fire Department Capital for two fire pumper trucks, $1,260,000. Information Technology Capital, $448,000. And that is for information technology software, computer equipment, radio dispatch, microwave, and GIS. Department of Public Works, Water Division Capital, $1,126,233 for U.S. Filter CPL, Treatment Plant, Water Main Replacement Program, Parks and Recreation Capital, $1,973,000 for various capital items. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the CFO <laughs> relative to the same. Accepted and placed on we file. We have a communication from the Mayor's Office Grants Coordinator requested that the City Council <laughs> authorize the acceptance and expenditures of the grant award in the amount of $4,855 from Mass Department of Transportation, Safe Routes to Schools, Signs and Lines Grant to Brockton School Department, Safe Routes to Schools, Signs and Lines Grant Fund, the grant funds will be used to install a solar-powered school speed limit sign and crosswalk and stop thermal line pavement markings on North Main Street at the intersection of Division Street and North Main Street. This will also include the installation of four no-parking signs on the west side of North Main Street adjacent to the school entrance. No match is required. Accepted and placed on file. Yeah, communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the Director of Planning and Economic Development requesting that the City Council authorize the acceptance and expenditures of the grant award in the amount of $200,000 from the Department of Housing and Community Development, DHCD, 40-hour Smart Growth Incentive, to City of Brockton Planning and Economic Development, 40 R smart growth activities. The incentive funds will be used but not limited to transit village and other zoning work, Campello District Revitalization Plan, Campello District Improvement Plan, and programs. 
Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the DPW commissioner requesting a Schedule B so called sewer charges and fees of Article 3, Sewer and Sewage Disposal. Disposal, Chapter 23, Division 2, Rates and Charges for the Revised Ordinances of the City of Brockton be amended. These changes are necessary to address infrastructure needs throughout the city as well as reimburse the general fund. Restructuring the rates would bring an additional annual revenue of $1,900,000 for the Water Enterprise Account. Implementing user fees would increase both the water and sewer enterprise funds by $2,300,000 each annually. Accepted and placed <coughs> on file. Thank you. Communication from the city <coughs> mayor. As recommended by the CFO and the commissioner of the Department of Public Works requesting that Schedule B, so-called sewer charges and fees of Article 3, Sewer and Sewage Disposal, Chapter 23, Division 2, Rates and Charges of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Brockton be amended as described herein. One, Schedule B, Annual Charges for Use of Public Sewer, reference Section 23-56, delete current schedule of annual charges for use of public sewer and replace it with the following on the effective date noted below. Rate block quarterly usage per 100 cubic feet of water. Rates effective in all bills mailed on or after July 1, 2020. From zero to 1250, $4.08. From 1251 to $2,500, $7.06. From 2501 to $5,000, $8.02. From 5001 to $10,802. From 1001 to $2,500, dollars And from 25001 to $999,999, dollars $899, Section 2325. Fees and charges amended by adding a water user fee and a sewer user fee, twenty-five dollars a quarter of a on all bills mailed on or after July first, twenty twenty. The recommended action will bring in an estimated four point two million of additional annual revenue to the water enterprise. In addition, sewer enterprise revenue will be increased by two point three million annually. The purpose of the rate change is to create equity within the block rate. The user fee for both water and sewer will support infrastructure investments and upgraded infrastructure, which will include new water and sewer mains, as well as repair of roads. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. We have an order. <coughs> An ordinance amending Chapter 23, Division 2, Rates and Charges, <coughs> Schedule B, for the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton be ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. The Schedule B, so-called Sewer Charges and Fees of Article 3, Sewer and Sewage Disposal, Chapter 23, Division 2, Rates and Charges for the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton be amended. Referred to ordinance. We have an order of rules and regulations governing motor vehicles for hire under Chapter 159A for carrying of passengers. Referred to finance. We have an order of assessors to act as agents of city council in matters of apportionment of betterments. Referred to finance. Order of the clerk to give notice of hearings before the council. Referred to finance. We have an order of regulations governing the operation of hawkers and peddlers within the city of Brockton. Referred to finance. An order of pawnbrokers are to deliver a list of purchased pawn articles to the chief of police. Referred to finance. We have an order. <coughs> Madam President. Yes, Councilor. If I might, I'd like to uh, take items number 36, 37, 38 collectively and also suspend the rules and we act on um, all three of them uh, this evening. If Back we and I know there's some people here to uh, speak on it as well. Yes, there are. Um, so before we vote, I would just like to announce that we have uh, guests in the chambers today that if councilors you have questions, you can um, ask them. We have um, our CFO, Troy Clarkson. We have our interim city solicitor, Sean Murphy. And um, of course the mayor is here. We also have, I'm not sure if, um, who else, I mean anybody that's here in the chamber that would like to answer any of the questions are 
If anybody has any objections. No, the question, okay. question would be no on accepting to take them collectively. Collectively, okay. And then the second question would be on uh, a vote okay. of suspension of the rules to act on this evening. Okay. So a motion has been made and properly seconded um, to accept to accept them, correct? To accept them collectively. Co to accept hands. them collectively by a show of hands. And the second but, would be to an act to suspend the rules. And we'll and act on them this evening. Yes. So we we'll, um, so we're going to suspend the rules and act on them this evening. So uh, is that by a hand vote? All those in favor of um, suspending the rules and act on them, the, acting on them this evening? The yeah. matter passes. No objections. No mind. objections. Okay. Okay. And the mayor wants to speak. We have Mayor Sullivan's here. So, Madam President, thank you. And, and members of the council, thank you. And I, I do want to thank um, former mayor and our, uh, our good friend, City Councilor at Large, Moses Rodriguez. Um, the dollar amount before you, Councilor, is, is relative, and we do have legal counsel here and the CFO. <laughs> is relative to the settlement relative to the Lopes case that we're all aware of. And uh, former mayor and now uh, back at the city council, Moses Rodriguez should be commended. He worked diligently with legal counsel to reach uh, a settlement on that. Um, there is a dollar amount attributed to that settlement and that's what is before you this evening. If you have any questions for the CFO, by all means, he'll answer them or uh, outside counsel as well. That's the purpose of the agenda item. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any councilors, any questions? Uh, Councilor Cruz? Would you like them read first? Okay. Would you? Yes. Can you? We'll have them read first. Oh, Mr. sorry. Clark? I thought we had. Yes. Okay. Number 36. The order total transfer of $4,750,000 from overlay surplus to law department court judgments. Ordered total transfers of $300,000 from overlay surplus to human resources full time salaries, $150,000, and to human resources purchases of services, $150,000, and a total transfer of $99,312.07 from the police department full time salaries to mayor's office personal services non overtime, $74,000. $498.60, and to Law Department Personal Services Non-Overtime, $24,813.44. Councilor Cruz? Uh, actually, just for uh, the people at home, the new councilors, I'd like to, if we could get Mr. O'Donnell possibly to explain what the overlay accounts are and how they u have usually been used in the past. Good evening. Uh, the overlay accounts are used for um, to pay exemptions, outstanding cases at the ATB, and um, abatements. So the the average over the last four years has been 1.4 million. That after last five years that were paid out. So there's ample money in that account. And just for the uh, this is council, so I should be standing. Uh, just for the public to understand. This money is generally put in the budget three to four years past that we have left over and then we are able to take it out and use it. It's money that was held in abeyance for any settlements that, well, that might have been in the past. Yes, well we had a large um, uh, personal property, AT&T and uh, Verizon. So we, we had to hold millions of dollars in there that, and that was settled three years ago. It only cost the city 350000 Thank you. So I mostly, I just been trying to ask you, just so the people at home know where this money's coming from. Yeah, come every and year. It's, every it year. It won't affect the city, the budget that we approved back in back in June for this going forward. So no. that's mostly what I wanted to get out. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, President. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions, Mayor? Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to um, give some further information. Um, so agenda item 36 is exactly what I said, the 4.75 is relative to the settlement. The next agenda item, the 300,000 is relative to the settlement, but there's a condition to the settlement with mandatory training and hired positions within the HR department, Sandra Knight's office. That's what that dollar amount is. 
And then the last agenda item that you took collectively is relative to the $99,312.07. And let me just explain what that is. Um, some of the councils that have been a while uh, with other administrations understand that. When a new administration comes in, certain people that work for the previous mayor are not kept on. Um, they are entitled, of course, under the law to get paid benefits, such as accrued vacation time. Um, there's a factor in there also with the untimely passing of Mayor Carpenter, his estate was entitled to $46,000 of earned vacation time that the late mayor had. Um, all those uh, added up is exactly what that dollar amount is. And then the last piece would be um, to the law department. Again, there's just been a recent switch in this new administration for the city solicitor. And attorney Nezzarella is also entitled to separation costs, which is attributed to his uh, earned vacation time as well. And that's what that agenda item is. Um, if that is not uh, approved by the council, my current budget will be short by almost $100,000. So I'm hopefully asking you to consider that strongly. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Council, uh, Councilor Thompson, please. Thank you, Thank you Madam President. Um, just quickly, Mr. Mayor, uh, this money's coming from uh, the police department full-time uh, salaries. Um, it's the administration's view that uh, this transfer of monies will not affect uh, the, the, the prospective overtime uh, for the police department. That's correct, uh, um, City Councilor. Um, CFO confirmed with the acting police chief, Mr. Williamson, today, and he opined and gave us an opinion that without question would ha not hamper the efforts of any projected cost on the police department and that the, the transfer could be done uh, in not a negative way whatsoever to the police department. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions? Councilor Cruz? I'm sorry, I didn't realize I do have one question, and this came up recently, and maybe Mr. Clarkson can answer this. Generally in the past, and I think you thought it was not the, the case, but to transfer from one department to another, uh, we needed a letter from the, the part department that was, department head that was transferring the money. Do we have that letter for this transfer? Thank you, Madam President. Troy Clarkson, uh, CFO. Uh, no, we did speak to the the chief. I did provide uh, to the the clerk uh, a detailed analysis of the police budget, and my budget director, Karen Preval, worked closely with Acting Chief Williamson uh, to coordinate this, uh, and uh, he has provided his assent. But no, I d we do not have a letter from the the chief stating same. Thank you, Mr. Clarkson. Oh, did you have another question, Carl? Well, I'll vote on this tonight, but uh, this came up uh, back uh, a few months ago, and you were of the opinion we don't need the letter, but I believe we looked into it and we do. So can we? I will uh, make a pledge shoot because I concurred with you that night when I was up there, and it's weird being here, I believe it or not. It's an odd, right? Moses is very odd, strange <laughs> thing standing here. Um, <laughs> if it's if it's past favorable, Councillor, we, we'll get a letter um, to the clerk's office uh, by close of business tomorrow, okay. Madam President. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, thank you. No thank other you questions. Thank you, Madam President. You're welcome. Any other questions? No. Councillors, um, seeing there's no other questions, there's been a, a motion's been made and properly seconded. Um, can we have a roll call vote, Madam Clerk? Acer? Yes. Cardoso? Yes. <coughs> yes. Ianary? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Monaghan? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative, no opposition. The appropriations pass. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, members of the council. Thank Madam you. Madam President. Councilor Yanieri. Madam President, at this time I'd like to move for reconsideration in hopes it does not prevail. Okay. Motion has been made for reconsideration in hopes it does not prevail and properly seconded. All those in favor of reconsideration? All those opposed? Consideration fails. Consideration fails. Madam President, if I might. Counselor. Just on, just while we're still on this particular item, I also too want to thank uh, City Council at Large, our former Mayor uh, Moises Rodriguez, for sitting down. Uh, one of the first things he did, I think, within a week's time, and I know the uh, Mayor will uh, will also side with me on this, is when he called myself and a couple other people uh, into his office that he wanted to make sure that we were able to settle this, to sort of alleviate, as he's all 
always said, a cloud that's been hanging over the city for the last few years, and I think it's um, it's been taken care of. So I do want to commend him for the work well done, and he kept right up with it, and um, he was determined that this was one different thing that was going to happen uh, under his watch, and, and it definitely did. And uh, it may have also happened under Mayor Cobbins as well, but he didn't have that opportunity to finish that. But no matter what or, or how, the man to the left of me got it taken care of. And with the rest of us here doing what we've done here this evening and uh, the new councils as well being drawn into this, at least now this cloud is alleviated and let's hope that we don't have this ever, ever again hanging over our heads. So thank you very much. Thank you, you Councillor. And um, I believe that those are all our sentiments. Thank you very much for all you did, um, Councillor. Where's Rodriguez. my race? <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to the to our mayor and the CFO's office, and I think the assessor's office and attorney Kirsten for all working together. I think um, they got a lot of information out to us. So um, thank you for all your hard work and the um, city solicitor's office. So thank you and congratulations, interim city solicitor. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Thank okay. you. Thank you, members. Next okay. item, Mr. Clark. <coughs> Acceptance of a grant for $600,000 from the Department of Justice, Office of Justice Programs, Comprehensive Opiate Abuse uh, Site-Based Program Grant Funds <laughs> to Brockton Mayor's Office, Comprehensive Opiate Abuse Site-Based Program Grant Funds. Refer to finance. Order of acceptance of a grant of $250,000 from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Fiscal 2020 Mass Municipal Public Safety Staffing Grant to Brockton Fire Department as a uh, special <coughs> strike that. SFY 2020 Mass Municipal Public Safety Staffing Grant Fund. Refer to finance. <laughs> Audited the sum of $5,457,233 is appropriated to pay various capital costs as set forth, including the payment of all costs yeah. incidental and related thereto the Cemetery Department, $650,000, Fire Department, $1,260,000, Information Technology, total $448,000, Water Department, $1,126,233, and parks and recreation total one million nine hundred and seventy three thousand dollars. Refer to finance. Audit <clears throat> that the mayor of Brockton, pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A, be and is hereby authorized to accept grants from the Commonwealth's Mass Works Program and two, that the mayor of Brockton be and is hereby authorized to expend and take such other action as necessary to carry out the terms, purposes, and conditions of this grant to be administered by the Department of Planning and Economic Development, and three, that this order shall take effect upon passage, housing choice grant in the amount of $229,000. Refer to finance. Not of acceptance and expenditures of the grant award in the amount of $200,000 from the Department of Housing and Community Development, 40R Smart Growth Incentive, the City of Brockton Planning and Economic Development, 40R Smart Growth Activities. Refer to finance. Not of acceptance and expenditures of the grant award in the amount of $4,855 from the Mass Department of Transportation, Safe Routes to Schools, Signs and Lines Grant, to Brockton School Department, Safe Routes to School, Signs and Land Lines Grant Fund. Refer to finance. Councilors, that concludes our agenda. Does anybody have any um, anything that they would like to announce or <coughs> any moments of rec recognition? <coughs> Councilor Monahan. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam. President, I just want to congratulate you on the fine job you did tonight. I noticed you didn't use the word reconciliation as somebody else did <coughs> earlier. <laughs> but congratulations, and I hope I'm glad to be working with all you guys. We have a good year. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Farwell. Madam President, uh, this is just a request to you. Uh, the Ordinance Committee will eventually have to schedule a meeting to handle some of these items. And I have a request in, and I know Mr. Clarkson is working on it for some information relative to uncollected water and sewer charges. <clears throat> and I would just like to ask respectfully uh, to you, uh, through you to the ordinance chair, 
um, if we could have a little bit of time to A, get that information and then digest it. We just hit our residents with tax bills and for many people they went up pretty considerably. Now we're looking at water rate increases and we're looking at a water and sewer user fee, $25 per quarter. So that's $100 per year minimum that it would go up. And, and I would just like to, just my personal request, calm things down a little bit, give us a chance to digest exactly what's going on, ask some questions of Commissioner Rowley and Mr. Claxon, and then at some point have the Ordinance Committee go forward with what they need to do. I, I'm just a little concerned that we're moving very quickly on things that are going to directly affect the finances of our residents, and I want to make sure that whatever we do is in the best interest of the city, but also reasonable for them. So. I thank you for any help you may give us. Definitely. Thank you, uh, Councilor Fowell. Any other councilors? Councilor uh, Rodriguez. Thank you, Madam uh, President. Uh, I just want to invite the members of, of the council and also the public that are watching this tonight that we will be holding our annual market interesting event at St. David's Strand, as you know, uh, chances are. Thank you, Councillor. And uh, as Councillor Rodriguez mentioned, we it is Martin Luther Monday. King weekend, and Monday is Martin Luther King Day, so we will not be meeting here on Monday night. Our uh, finance meeting will be Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock. Uh, Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Madam President. And uh, just to piggyback on that, uh, to, for the information of all the councillors and uh, those at home, the Brockton area NAACP holds their annual breakfast uh, that will be held this uh, Saturday, uh, January 18th, uh, 9 to 12 o'clock a.m., uh, 9, a, uh, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at uh, Lombardo's this year. It's always a great event. Last year was a uh, really good time, and I invite and welcome all of you to attend this Saturday. It is, it's always a wonderful breakfast and a get-together that the uh, NAACP does a great job putting on. So thank you, Councillor. Any other questions? No other questions before us this evening. Um, I hereby adjourn this meeting.